Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Today I'm going to be talking about a situation you may run into where you have a pool or if you do pool service and you notice that the pool is constantly having an algae problem all season long. I'm going to go over some reasons why this may be happening and offer you some tips and helpful ways to prevent the algae from coming back. If you're looking for the best app available to automate your billing, organize your pool route, notify your customers, and track your repairs, go to useaquasuite.com. Aquasuite has been built by the pool industry professionals for the pool industry professionals to give us the tools we need to get the most out of our business. Tell them you heard about it on the Pool Guy podcast show for an exclusive offer when you sign up. So let me first start off by saying probably the best way to prevent the algae from actually blooming in your pool is to have a proper running filtration system. You want to maintain your chlorine level at 3 to 5 parts per million in the summertime and you want to make sure that you're running the pool long enough each day. Those go a long way in preventing the algae from actually forming in your pool. However, algae can still form even in the ideal conditions that I described there. And there are many reasons why the algae can bloom in a pool even when the conditions seem ideal. Uh, let me go over a few of the reasons why algae will form. So basically algae is a plant. So it uses the light that it gets in the summertime and it uses the process of photosynthesis to grow. If you remember your biology class in high school, you'll kind of it'll ring a bell how plants kind of grow and multiply. So algae uses the same process. So the light it hits the algae in the water and the nutrients in the water will feed the algae. And it could be anything in the water from inorganic to organic debris. Um, if you use your pool, it could be your suntan lotion or sweat or any kind of uh, anything that comes out of your body will be food for the algae. So it's definitely something that's going to happen uh, in many cases because all the elements are there for the algae to bloom. Even though you have all the elements there to prevent it, all the elements may be present for the algae to actually take off and bloom. And the algae will also need warmer water. That's why in the summertime, when the water temperature gets above 60 degrees, you'll see a lot more algae blooming in the pool. So there are areas in the pool where algae can be um, forming all the time constantly. And these are areas that are kind of dead spots where it doesn't circulate very well in the pool. You'll find these dead spots at the step area of the pool, usually in a corner of a step, in a shady part of the step area. Sometimes you'll find them in sharp corners in a pool, definitely in a spa. If you have a spa bypass, uh, sometimes the bypass isn't big enough to let a lot of the water circulate. And so the, sometimes the spa water can be, a, can be a dead spot for algae to grow. And you'll see algae in your attached spa in the corners by the steps in the spa, things like that. So those are the areas where the algae can just be a constant problem. And I typically find algae on my route on the step area of someone's pool. And typically I'll... I know that it's not a very good circulating area. It could be a step area in the corner of the pool or just somewhere where it gets a lot of shade and typically that's where the algae will form. The pool water could also be very old. If you haven't drained your pool in years, your total dissolved solids, which is basically what happens is that when the water evaporates in the pool, only the pure water evaporates. So everything else gets left behind in the water and that builds up over time. And that causes the TDS level to rise. And so ideally, if your pool water is, you know, anywhere from 5 to 10 years old, chances are you have a lot of high level of TDS in the pool from all the water evaporating, all the pure water evaporating, and all the other stuff being left behind. And I'll probably do a mini cast on TDS to give you a breakdown of what actually goes into that. Uh, so that could be a problem, too, if your water is old and you notice that you're getting algae blooms and you have everything balanced and you're still having trouble. Could have really high cyanuric acid level in the pool. This is a typical problem in the west coast area where you we use tablets in our pools to maintain them. And as you're adding the tablets to the pool, you're also adding cyanuric acid. So once it gets over 100, 150 parts per million, um, there's a good chance that the chlorine won't be quite as effective. What happens is that the chlorine technically doesn't lock up, but with a high level of cyanuric acid, 
the cyanuric acid molecule and the chlorine molecule bond and unbond very rapidly, you know, in split seconds, or it unbonds and bonds um, a great number of times. And so when the conditional level gets really high, the, the bonding and unbonding of the cyanuric acid molecule and the chlorine slows down. And so that was, that's what makes the chlorine less effective. It's not the fact that it locks up the chlorine in any way. It just slows down the process that um, is normally typical when the cyanuric acid level is lower. It's much more effective, and the process of bonding and unbonding works better. So, And you can also have very low cyanuric acid where you don't have enough in there to protect, protect the chlorine from the sun's UV rays, and it burns off quickly, and thereby the pool chlorine zeroes out and the algae will form. So those are very typical things that I see also that cause the algae to form in the pool. I mentioned at the beginning having a good running filtration system. So a lot of times algae will form because the filter is dirty. You may not think that's a major factor, but it is. Even if you have good flow, the filter is not clean. Algae can definitely form in the pool. And also if the filter has an issue like torn grids or a torn cartridge, algae can definitely form in that case. And then I also mentioned running the pool long enough. You definitely want to run the pool longer in the summertime to circulate the water, especially if you notice an algae problem. Increase your run time by two or three hours and see if that helps with the algae problem in the pool. So there are typically three types of algae you run into. Um, in California, we have yellow algae or mustard algae. Then we have uh, green algae, or the pool will turn green basically. The yellow and green algae are very similar. And then you have what's called black algae, and this is very common in California. It's these black dots that are all over the bottom and walls of the pool, and it's definitely a really tough algae to get rid of, so you definitely don't want to get that in the first place. So again, I go back to the beginning when I say keep the chlorine level at 3 to 5 parts per million, have a good filtration system, and also circulate the pool the proper amount of time. This goes a long way in preventing an algae bloom, but it may not prevent algae um, entirely from your pool. So if you're having a problem with algae in your pool um, all season long or just spot algae here and there, there are some things you can do to help prevent the algae from blooming. I guess one of the easiest things you can do is to add an algicide at the beginning of the season and add the maintenance dose continuously every week. A very popular algicide to add at the beginning of the season is something called polyquat 60 and you just look on the bottles and look for that active ingredient it's actually an algicide so it'll kill the algae in the pool and you can add a maintenance dose of that every week to your pool to prevent the algae from blooming in your pool or growing so that's one thing you can do again it is a chemical algicide so some people don't like adding that to the pool for that reason another thing you can do is you can add borates to your pool to bring it to 30 to 50 parts per million. I recently filmed the Optimizer product and it's a really easy way to add borates to your pool using the boric acid in the formula. You can also add borates um, with other products to your pool but basically by adding the borate to your pool the borate will inhibit the algae cell from splitting and multiplying thereby eliminating algae growth in your pool. Technically it's not an algicide registered by the EPA. In most cases they don't register it as that, but it is an algicide for that reason that it stops the algae from growing in the pool and from multiplying. So that's a great way to add to um, prevent algae from growing in your pools with the borate product and it also has a lot of other great features that go along with that that enhances the water of the pool. So that's one thing I recommend doing versus using an algicide every week in your pool. Another product that you can use in the pool to eliminate the algae in the pool is called sodium bromide. This comes in many different labels for manufacturers. The one I use is called Yellow Treat, and you can also get what's called Yellow Treat. A lot of the small pool stores or other manufacturers have their own brand of the sodium bromide product. Just look for that active ingredient in the container itself, and this is a great way to prevent algae growth and also to treat the algae in the pool. There's a liquid form of this called No More Problem, and you can also get that and add it to your pool as a weekly maintenance dose, and that will definitely prevent algae growth. It's just that you're adding bromine to the pool, and that's reacting with the algae and killing it. Bromine is known to kill algae. That's why if you have a um, above-ground hot tub, 
you notice that you never get algae in there if you're using bromine tabs in there because the bromine is a natural inhibitor and killer of algae. So when you add it to a chlorine pool, it will kill the algae. But there is a process to adding it if you do have an algae bloom. And I'll go over uh, treating the algae at the end of this also so you can actually treat the algae that you may have in the pool right now. You can also use a product like the Pool RX. I really like the Pool RX. It's a great mineral product. It basically uses copper that's chelated or bonded to the anode that you have inside the Pool RX unit. And this definitely will prevent algae growth. It'll kill algae. It'll prevent the microalgae, the algae you can't see before it forms from growing. Very similar products to this are the Frog. And Zodiac also has a mineral system. Both of those, though, need to be put in line to your equipment. So the Pool RX is really easy to use. You just drop it in your skimmer or your pump basket, run the pool for three or four hours. That'll get the element into the mineral, into the water, and circulate it. And that'll prevent the algae from growing. And I use this on my pool route also, along with the borate products. And you wouldn't need to use the Pool RX in the pool that you put borates in. They pretty much do the same thing. So it's an either-or thing with any of these products. You don't need to use a multiple combination of these products together. For instance, if you're using the Pool RX, you don't need to use the maintenance dose of any algicide or any of the sodium bromine product in the pool. If you're going to use the algicide as a maintenance dose, you don't need the Pool RX in your pool or the borates in your pool. Another product that's similar is the Remington Solar Sunshock. This is a solar-powered um, device that releases copper in the water that will control the algae in your pool. And again, you don't want to use this in conjunction with the Pool RX or any other kind of algicide. These are all standalone products. Um, Easy Care has what's called Algitech or pool tech, the same, it's the same chemical, and you put a maintenance dose in the pool. It's a great way to keep the algae from forming in your pool also. You can use enzymes. There's many enzymes you can add to your pool that will help prevent the algae in the pool. You can also use a phosphate remover that will remove the food for the algae, algae in the pool, and that will also help prevent the algae from blooming and growing in the pool. So you can see that there's a lot of different products that you can use for this. I wouldn't recommend using a low price copper algicide. Basically, you you got a good potential to stain your pool surface with that. So stay away from anything that's copper based um, for sure in liquid form. There are a few that are made for the pool professional that are a lot better quality and won't drop out as easily. But you can easily overdose your pool with copper algicide anyway and cause it to drop out. There's a specific amount you need to add to treat the algae. And if you add too much of the product, you can definitely cause a staining in your pool from the copper algae side. And if I were to pick two methods to prevent algae, I would say the Pool RX would be one of the methods I would use. I use those in about 25 of my accounts right now. And then the other way to prevent the algae growth is to use borates in the pool. And I have several pools on my route, including my own personal uh, pool. I'm using borates in there as a way to prevent algae growth and enhance the water. Those are my preferred method of preventing algae growth in the pool. So let's say that you're fighting a little algae problem right now. You notice that there's some algae growing in your step area. Your chlorine level is fine. It's at three parts per million and your pool circulating very, very well. But the algae is still forming every week in the step area of your pool. What I use on my pool route is the sodium bromide product and I'll go through the method real quick so you can actually treat your pool that has algae right now. So make sure the chlorine level is at three parts per million. And then what you want to do is get a gallon of liquid chlorine. You want to buy the sodium bromide product. Look at the label at your local pool store online for that ingredient. You can get the yellow treat version or the yellow treat version. And then you would take the cap off the product. The cap on that particular container is four ounces. So you fill it up with the sodium bromide and then you would pour it in over the affected algae area. And then right away, immediately after pouring that in, you would pour the one gallon of liquid chlorine right over the same spot. And typically that will kill the algae um, within a day. So the next morning you wake up, the algae will be gone. And then you can use the maintenance dose of the sodium bromide or sodium bromine in your pool, which is about one ounce, I think, every week to prevent the algae from coming back. And then if you wanted to switch over to the other method that I mentioned, the borates or the pool RX, I definitely would recommend doing that. As soon as you clear the algae up, you can definitely switch over to that method and just make sure you follow the directions on the pool RX and also 
watch one of the videos I filmed on adding bore rates to your pool. I have three different methods that I've filmed so far that are really effective in adding the bore rate product to your pool and bring the level up to the 30 to 50 parts per million to prevent algae growth moving forward. Of course, if your pool is green right now, you can't see the bottom, you would use my green pool method. Um, I call it the shock and awe method. You're basically bringing the chlorine level up to blazing high levels, and you're going to use the um, either the Pool RX or the sodium bromide product. You don't use both of those in conjunction. And to treat the algae, I have several videos on cleaning a green pool up with different methods. I have the uh, sodium brom bromide method using the yellow treen. I have one where I use the um, Swamp Treat, which is also a sodium bromide based product with other elements in there. I have one using Yellow Out, which is an ammonia based product. I have one using the Pool RX. And so I have various methods that I show of cleaning up a green pool. One thing I should mention is that if you have a sand filter, one of the preferred ways of getting rid of the cleaning up a green pool with a sand filter, we don't have too many of those in California. But in other regions of the country, like Texas or Florida, you do have several sand, several regions with sand filters that are predominant. So you would flock the pool in that case. This, this is adding a flocking agent. Uh, a popular one is called dropout. So you would add it to the pool, put it in recirculate mode for one or two hours, and then turn everything off for 48 hours. That'll drop everything to the bottom of the pool. And then you would vacuum out the pool to waste mode to get rid of that. It's not as effective in a cartridge filter or D filter because those are more effective when they're actually circulating the water to clear it up. But it's definitely an effective method if you have a sand filter at your, your residence or if you do service in an area with a lot of sand filters. Try the flock method. It's pretty effective in those areas with a sand filter. And if your pool has black algae, you'll see little dots on the bottom of the pool. It could be really small, it could be a size of a quarter. So anywhere from a quarter, size of a quarter down, um, black algae can be on the walls or on the floor of the pool. If you're fortunate enough to have a white plaster pool or maybe an older color plaster pool that's really stained and mottled already, you can use a product called um, Algae Ban by Hasa. And Pool Season also makes a similar product. Basically, it's just um, the trichlor tablet ground up into a granular form and you would sprinkle that on the bottom and that pretty much kills black algae instantly. If you have a pool that is a pebble tech pool or a colored plaster pool and you have black algae, um, the method you're going to have to use is the Pool RX. You could put that in the pump basket or skimmer and run that in your pool, keep the coin level high and it may take three to four weeks to start seeing the black algae die off but it, it does work. You can also use Easy Care um, Algae Tech. You just would use that in your pool and keep adding the maintenance dose, and that eventually will kill the black algae also. But I find the most effective way is with the Algae Band product. Sprinkle it on the black algae, um, let it set on there, and within the, the next day, you'll see the black algae has already been removed. The only caveat with that is that you can potentially stain the surface of the pool because it is a trichlor granular and trichlor has cyanuric acid in it which could stain the surface so that's why I say only use it in a color I mean in a white plaster pool not in a color plaster pool that's newer or a pebble tech pool definitely not in a vinyl pool or fiberglass pool so it's a very limited product for that reason it's only for a white plaster pool basically but it's highly effective I have a video on that uh, treating black algae with using the um, Asa Algae Ban. You can refer to that video also on my YouTube channel for that. And I should also mention that if you are brushing the walls and the algae is not coming off the wall, that it may not be algae. You could have a metal stain or it could be an organic stain on the pool surface itself or it could be some organic staining underneath calcium that had formed on the pool surface and you can't brush it off. So algae should brush off your pool and it should be killed by a high level of chlorine in the pool. And if you notice that it's not coming off, then it's probably not algae, it's probably some kind of staining of the pool surface itself. And there's other ways to treat that, but any kind of algicide or the pool RX or anything like that, it's not gonna work if it is, of course, not algae that you're dealing with at that moment. So most algae can be prevented by just keeping your chlorine level week to week at three to five parts per million, not letting it drop below three parts per million. 
having a clean filtration system and running your pool long enough that will prevent a lot of algae problems in your pool. However, you may still get algae um, if there's a windstorm or if the gardener's putting fertilizer in or if you have a pool party and the chlorine zero is out or if the pool has a problem and it's not running all week long. All of these can cause an algae bloom in the pool. So be aware that you know things could happen to your pool that will cause the algae to form that are out of your control basically. Um, but I hope some of the methods I mentioned can help you prevent it and of course treat it. And I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel talking about algae treatment and prevention. So check those videos out if you need further help with algae in your pool or if you have a green pool. Those are some great resources I put up on my YouTube channel uh, at no cost to you. If you're a homeowner looking for more help with your pool care needs, definitely go to my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, and you can find helpful web pages there. A lot of the web pages will lead you to the videos I mentioned here about algae treatment. I have um, on the home page, I have links to a green pool cleanup and things like that to make it easy for you to find the resources you need. I also have an ebook, and in that ebook, I have a section on algae treatment. I actually start the book off about algae since it's such a common problem. And in the ebook, there's a link to the videos that I talk about here that will help you treat the algae in your pool. And I also have plenty of vid videos on PoolRx and adding borates to your pool um, to prevent algae from growing in the pool there also. If you're in the pool industry and you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one help, consider joining my coaching program. For as little as 33 cents a day, you can get one-on-one -on -one help through text messaging or calling me for the $20 a month level. And basically the benefits that I offer, the discounts, will pay for the membership for the first two or three years easily. So consider joining the coaching program. You can learn more about this at PoolGuyCoaching.com. I'm currently over 200 members right now and growing. So definitely check that out if you're interested in enhancing your business or you need more one-on-one -on -one help with your pool route. This podcast has been brought to you by InyoPools.com. InyoPools has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts in 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have the parts delivered right to your door. And the podcast is also brought to you by the Riptide Pool Vacuum System. The Riptide is a powerful vacuum system that will allow you to get large debris off the bottom of the pool rapidly. To learn more about the Riptide, you can visit their website at www.riptidevac.com. Hope you found this podcast helpful. Have a great rest of your week and God bless. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show.